my tire, dude. I just have a bunch of heavy tools. All right, so now we got to plan the next thing. We have the equivalent of a 300-pound dead man out in the water. He's made of steel, and he's about four feet tall. And he has hoist points, but I'm not sure I'll be able to hit him, and I don't know how good the points are. It has sensitive wires on it that are embrittled and old. You can't stress the wires. So first, and it's a tough environment. I won't go into details, but you can't just go grab it. <laughs> it's basically on the moon, underwater. So I do have a drawbridge or like a plank to walk out on, and uh, I can get to it. And so I'm thinking I'm going to take uh, the two of the 20,000 pound straps first of all, and, um, and, and reach under, and, and, and the thing is horizontal, basically. I'm going to attach to it at two points, so I have a sling, just like you do with an engine hoist. When you're hoisting an engine out of a car, the key is getting it balanced, because you think, oh, it won't matter, until you're trying to pull it straight up and it's catching on things. And even like a pinky nail's worth of catch when you're trying to move something two or three or 400 pounds, it just fucks you all up, and then it unloads, and it's lame, so. And it's already affixed with who knows what, and I'm not, you know, nobody really knows. So I'm gonna attach a sling to it, and the first, in the sling will, will actually be ratchet straps, 20,000 pounds. And I think those have enough ratchet in them to unload it from its current, you know, mounting. So I'm gonna move it onto my own mountings, and then I have control over it. Now those are a little hard to release, but we'll figure it out. I'll make a little kick release. So we'll get the, if you're going to move something heavy, the first thing you want to do is get control of the weight. That means lift it and then remove whatever old strapping is there. And it's probably strapping on top of strapping on top of strapping, you know. It's like it starts getting loose and you strap it again. I'm expecting three or four different kinds of strapping. Maybe metal strapping, ropes, fucking, you know. <laughs> you don't know. You got to figure it out. Since we have control of the weight, the, uh, the winch will be here. I'm fucking so excited. My $70 winch. <laughs> The winch, rated for 2,500 pounds, will be here on Friday, and we'll be at the limits of it. And so I went with the metal cord instead of the synthetic cord. Probably a bad idea, but I figured there's gonna be a lot of binding on the cord, and I figure a metal cord will rub through wood and stuff like that better than the synthetic cord, because we're gonna abuse it. And then eventually I'm gonna replace it with some of that shock cord. That shit's expensive. I have to get some used that's damaged. So, we thought of a thousand ways to make a, you know, a vertical hoist, and it's just too much lumber, dude. It's too much work. It's too much time. It's it's not um, it's not feasible. So what I think I'm going to do instead is uh, bring it or bring it around to a different spot where I can lay down some plywood and just drag it straight out, old school style. So you know, in that thinking, it might be worth it to uh, take a 50 gallon barrel and cap it and make a float and then strap that 50 gallon barrel to the dead man, which is a 10 horsepower submersible pump that weighs between 250 and 350 pounds. Now I'll look at how much weight a 50 gallon barrel can float quite a bit. And then if I can make that thing float, well, I can just push it out, right? And to, and to uh, push it away. And then I can guide it where I want and then I can pull it up um, a series of, uh, of uh, overlapped plywood up to a working surface. And then, dude, I don't know how fucking old that thing is, <clears throat> but we have to get into the fasteners. I don't know if they're gonna be Phillips, number three, or they're gonna be Allen, but there's gotta be you know, a wet bay in the thing, and there's gotta be a dry bay. And so we gotta chase the wiring in to the wet bay and then figure out where how it bulkheads through. What's the mechanism? Is it potted? Is it O-ring sealed? You know, is it all wet? I don't know. I fucking never take it apart. A giant fucking pump that weighs 300 pounds. I've taken apart other pumps. Um, we'll find out. And what our goal is, is to figure out why the yellow wire has no conductivity. Now, it's probably because the pump jammed and then burnt out the winding. So maybe it burnt a winding, or maybe it burnt a solder joint, or maybe it burnt the wire, or maybe it blew a fuse, or maybe it's got a breaker button. Who knows? You know, find out. 
these, these sorts of pumps, all of the smarts, as far as I understand, are up in the pump box. Not They don't have a centrifugal switch or anything like that. I, and I think that's why I have starting caps and running caps and a relay in my uh, in my pump control box, right? Because at first, I give it the starting caps and the running caps. And then once it starts going, I, I have to figure out that logic again. It, it switches out the starting caps because you'll just cycle them and they'll overheat and explode. So we'll switch out the, um, the running caps or the, uh, the starting caps. Those are the big ones. It will, it will switch those out and then you'll just be on running caps like 50 microfarad. So, and now there would still, uh, I think the centrifugal mechanism is still inside that switches the, uh, I think it's their separate functions, right? Your starting caps and running caps, and then there's your starting windings and running windings. And I think the running, the starting windings are still switched out centrifugally to allow you to, you know, so, so you have a more aggressive winding at T0, so you can bump start the thing, and once it starts spinning, it throws weights out, like the clutch on a dirt bike, and then it starts running on just a, yeah, I think that's the way it works. So I'll go refresh on that. I'm tired, dude. But you gotta pretend it's a fucking emergency every day of your life time is time is different dude you can coast and you can coast and you can coast and you can coast and, and and you know maybe you get too close to the rocks and you can reach out and paddle paddle you know paddle up shit creek with just your hands or a paddle or fucking a trolling motor or a five horsepower motor or maybe even a 500 horsepower motor but one day, dude, the wind's gonna be blowing and the current's gonna be wrong and the waves are gonna be crashing and the engine's not gonna be working and you're gonna find yourself in a precarious situation. And so to survive that, you must be physically fit. You must be mentally fit. You must be able to function while exhausted and function while feeling adrenaline and while in total panic. You're gonna to need to be equipped with basic skills, how to deal with a 12 volt electrical system, boats and cars and winches, how to deal with an internal combustion engine, whether it's a gasoline engine or a propane engine, or whether it's a diesel engine with a fucking carburetor or fuel injection, you better be able to fix that shit. You need to know every basic hand tool. You need to know how to work without getting hurt. You need to know how to work contorted. I mean fucking with your head in a fucking crack, dude, with your feet straight up in the air, dude, with the blood rushing into your head, with a flashlight in your fucking mouth, dude. Spiders crawling all over your face. You will get the boat working. You will get the truck working. And it's what allows you to take more risk. See, I can jump in my truck right now and head out into the deep national forest days away from other humans and feel comfortable. I can jump in my boat right now and go miles out to sea and feel comfortable that I brought the right tools and the right know-how, right? And a good radio and a flare gun. <laughs> um, I can go walk the railing of a bridge. I can climb 30 feet up a ladder. I can cut a tree down. I can run a chainsaw to you. I have a friend who's good at chainsawing. I think I'm gonna find a few trees which are dead and have him stand there while I make a fool of myself attempting to learn how to drop trees. None of ours are very big. I mean, we have big ones, but they're all alive. We'll find some like 40 foot trees that are standing dead if there's any left. And uh, I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna relearn how to drop a tree. I never did it well. You need to be able to work when you're starving and when you're dehydrated and when you're crashing off of sugar and caffeine with no more sugar and caffeine and no whiskey. You need to know how to work in despair. Work in pain. Work with injury. 
It doesn't matter, dude. It's your fucking tool. It doesn't matter how bad your hand hurts, you will keep fucking squeezing harder until it lets go. It's just the same as going to the gym and working out. I just work out different muscles, and mine are far more practical. You need to know what will kill you and what won't. You need to know all of your oils and solvents. You gotta know how to use a can of starter fluid. You gotta know who you can trust and why. You need to know the failings of the men around you. I know some men who I wouldn't trust in my living room alone for five minutes. But if it came down to it, they'd be my first pick. And I know other men who I'd let live in my living room for as long as they needed to. But if it came down to it, and I'd leave them behind. Oh, yellow light. Coasting into town. You value people in different ways through different times. If it's a depression, if it's war, like a foreign war, if it's a civil war, better pick your fucking pick your skill set everyone's busy saying pick your side you gotta pick your side you could be with Trump or you can be with Biden which is it those are fucking idiots you need to pick your fucking skill set dude what are you gonna do are you gonna be cannon fodder for us are you gonna be a, a villager you wanna be an engineer you wanna be a driver pilot you want to do logistics you want to understand the fucking enemy you want to work covert you want to do fucking anything to survive so make yourself useful now of course old people are exempt right they always are kids and old people two year olds and five year olds and eight year olds and you know depending on people's health 80 year olds and 70 year olds and some 60 year olds but if you're a fucking age dude if you're like 13 to uh, 63 you're on Schindler's list I will put your fucking ass right to service dude right to work right to service let's go you ready anyone who knows knows dude you don't want to find out so pick something you can do when you're miserable Get real good at it. Make sure people know that you can do it. Make sure you have the tools for the job. Make sure you have some materials for the job. Because at some point in time, you might have to prove yourself, right? You tell everybody in the world you're a fucking a vacuum cleaner fucking repairman expert. But if, if you don't have a vacuum cleaner to display those skills, and you're just talking, dude. And I've known so many guys who are just fucking talking, dude. Like, like they know all the lingo. Right, like they're the front desk guy at the vacuum repair shop. So they've heard of every failure and they've heard of every story of how it's fixed, but they've never taken a vacuum apart. Right, so they'll tell you they're a vacuum repairman and they don't know which end of the fucking screwdriver to use, dude. They don't know a number one Phillips from a number three Phillips. They don't know metric Allen wrenches from SAE. They don't even know what torques is, dude. They don't know how to take anything apart, dude. They certainly don't know how to set tension or fucking not strip, you know, self-tapping plastic threads or, you know, <laughs> right? So, <clears throat> I've more than proven that I get out and fucking do it. And uh, since I started um, posting more in, uh, in blogs and... Um, videos and stuff of me fucking doing it I got a lot less haters dude because you know it, there's a reason for um, get people turning left there's a reason for trolls right some trolls are useful because they run off fucking shit talking faker like if people are just like sales guys trying to like on a forum trying to say something's really good and they're in an ain't you know and they're and they're shilling and they're pretending to be like oh yeah look at this cool thing I got it works so good and we, we fucking, you know, we troll those guys out of there. But, you know, sometimes the trolls used to come after me. And they still do from time to time, and I don't appreciate it. That's why I leave a big, long track record of Bernie smoky fucking skid marks, dude. 
So in case you want to troll me, you, like basically I set up a filter. You better be better at it than me. And then I, it's not trolling. Then I invite your fucking perspective. You know, some old electrical engineer or some old electrician or some old pump repairman or some fucking old a fucking car mechanic or whatever wants to punk me hey great dude let's see if he knows what he's talking about maybe his information's outdated maybe my information's outdated maybe he'll learn maybe i'll learn it ends up being a win-win go ahead it ends up being a win-win when uh uh, a more senior uh, individual uh, calls you out on something. Whoa, this person's driving around with their trunk open, dude, and it's fucking banging up and down. What the fuck's going on? Uh, get ready, dude. Already. Uh, I gotta fucking service the firearms and uh, get the reloading setup going. I just I can't afford the fucking time for it. I got too many important things to do, dude. Although that's important. Maybe I can find a minute to pull the loading reset up, reloading setup out of the goddamn trunk and at least set it up and uh, make sure that it functions. I'm gonna be reloading uh, 380. And uh, we're gonna reload them hot so my fucking pistol actually cycles. Oh, I'm hungry. I found a bottle of water this time, dude, so I can drink water. It's a real fucking special treat. I got some AC blasting. So a lot of people think they're exempt from my fucking little mini speech rant here, right? Only if you're old or young. You could be missing an arm and I'll still hold you as to a standard, dude, to the best of my ability. You could still fucking work. You could do a lot with one arm, dude. You could do a lot with one leg. I've known people I didn't even know that message coming in. I've known people I didn't even know they were missing a leg for like two years, dude. Think about that. Below the knee, but think about that. They were so fucking normal, I didn't know they were missing a leg below the knee. Like they're missing a foot and an ankle. They have a cool spring. They they uh they can they can run and walk and jog and they have different size springs for different activities. It's fucking cool. It's got a shave though and hurt feel a lot of pain like that so your critical infrastructure is going to go down um, electricity uh, natural gas roadways gas stations ATMs the police force your monthly check. These things are gonna break. Maybe for three hours, maybe for three days, maybe for three weeks, maybe for three months, maybe for three years, maybe for 30 years. <laughs> so, you don't know. Start figuring out what you're gonna do. After the quake of 89, we built food stockpiles and started rotating it. You know why? We had no food after the earthquake. We have water, two gallons stockpiled. And that's gonna happen during the summer. So you're not gonna be able to just catch rainwater. You will have access to solar. I wouldn't expect any giant cloud systems. Although that can happen. gasoline fuel you'll want to conserve it and run only the most e efficient generator like a Honda EU generator and only while you need it not just for fucking running some LED lights dude you run the generator to charge batteries and you run your lights off of batteries if you fire up the old Coleman dude that one that's built inside of your house like 20 kW drain your fuel in three days 
I'm talking about making your fuel last like 30 days with a mix of solar and a lightweight generator. Oh. Propane stores real well. I saw a propane retrofit kit for the uh, Honda EU 2000, or maybe it was a 2200. Um, I meant to buy it, I just got sidetracked. So I'll go ahead and get the uh, propane retrofit kit and show you. It's so easy to use. Drill a hole in the fucking airbox, and it just comes with this with a, with a pre-metered spray head, and just fucking all it does is just blast propane into the fucking intake, dude. And it uh, produces a little less power. I watched this guy do a bunch of tests. Like, instead of 1,400 watts, he was getting like 1,200 watts. You know, like whatever. Assume you're going to get about 1,000 watts. You'll be all right. 1,000 watts is a lot of work, dude. It's a lot of work. You do a lot with 1,000 watts. Think about your appliances. If they're gas or they're electric. If they're propane, you know, or if they're natural gas to the city. Propane tanks will run empty, and those motherfuckers will not come out. There's going to be nobody to, to, to come fill it up. So you want a big propane tank, and you want it full. I know it's worse when there's big fires, but a lot of guys, they, they bury them, shit like that. I don't know. If fire comes, you're fucked. So really, you want your propane tank out exposed, and you want to have a fire line. You can have some trees around your house, but they need to be limbed up. And the underbrush needs to be cut back. And if your neighbors are fuck-ups, you need to get on them about it. Fires almost got my mom, dude. You could see the fires. Like, you can see the burnt shit from her house, dude. That close. It was just the river. The river was the fucking block. And that river in spots is only, like, 10 feet wide. And it goes almost dry sometimes. 